Now, in theory, it sounds good, doesn't it? You mix people across their boundaries. But you have to say, where does this lead? Because if you take a police officer, and if we take somebody like Maria Wallace, who was the head of Devon and Cornwall Police, all of a sudden she's getting very excited that she knows how the levers of political power in Europe work. Is that why we paid her? Didn't we pay her to solve crime on the streets of, of Devon? So Julia Middleton is waxing lyrical about breaking down boundaries and getting people outside their silos. But one of the problems that's going on in society at the moment is we're not getting the concentration of people within their field. A hospital's job is to make people better, presumably. Do you really need the chief executive understanding how the levers of power work in his local area? That's not his job. So you've got to be very careful with reading what Common Purpose says. It sounds good on the tin, but when you actually analyse it, something is not right. And the other thing that goes with it is they're operating under the Chatham House rule. Right, yes, Chatham House rule. I do understand what that is, but if you could explain... Well, the Chatham House rule is a rule which came out of Chatham House, which is the Tavistock Institute, I think, in London. And basically it says you can have a meeting... But when you leave the meeting, you don't say who was present or who gave a particular piece of information. But you can use the information. You can use the information. Okay. So, so it's it, semi-secret then, this organisation? Well, absolutely. Even but, though it's a charity, it's supposed to be for the common absolutely. good. But you imagine you've got a closed-door room where you have a police officer, a local developer, and somebody from the local authority who has control over public money and grants. The public has a right, I believe, to know what went on in those meetings. But if, if, if I try, or if other members of the public try to get that information out into the open, Common Purpose shuts all the doors. And I can tell you that they shut the doors at the moment by coercing people in the public sector to breach the Data Protection Act. Are, and you, we, are you seriously saying that they're forcing people to breach the Data Protection Act? Abs coercing was the word I used. Coercing. And we can prove that because we know at the moment that a couple of local authorities, at least one police authority, and uh, another major London organisation are getting quite upset with Common Purpose because names, the names of people who've put in freedom of information requests are being compiled by Common Purpose on a list. Now, how, why, do, how why, do they get those names? How would, how would they get those names? Because a common purpose person will phone up their common purpose colleague in a council and say, who made that request? And this is the insidious nature of common purpose in the first place, that instead of people working through the rules and structure of their own organisation, they are putting the requests and demands of common purpose above above their own organisation. So it's, it's like a kind of shadow government, isn't it's it? It's a shadow government. And what gets quite spooky, to use that word, is where you see Common Purpose saying, our networks, this is a quote, our networks will soon be very important. What do they mean? But then you see them now starting to join UK networks with networks in Europe. So we think we've got our normal system of government operating, but what's actually happening under the surface is a new common purpose is shaping the direction of society. And you will have heard Gordon Brown talk about common purpose. And there's he, a, Yes, and I heard Barack Obama using the expression common purpose. Absolutely, because there is a real, there's a real movement when you say, well, what is that common purpose? And that common purpose is a new form of government, and it certainly is not democratic. OK, if you've got a text, please text us in on 8777, put the word EDGE, a space, and then your text. It'd be nice to know who you are and where you're texting from. I'm going to just read a couple here. I've got one from Jay in Northern Ireland. It says, sounds like another group of New World Order minions. Are there any Freemasonic links? Uh, this, this is a very good question. We have stuck just with common purpose, but I have to say that researchers who are working with us are adamant that they are finding links through to Freemasonry. Now, I'm not going to get into what could be quite a heavy discussion on that. I will just say that, yes, we're finding links. You draw your own conclusions. OK, I've got two more here. They're quite similar, so I'll read them both together. Does Common Purpose have an end goal? That's Tim in Wolverhampton. And uh, Pat in Devon says, 
What can be done about common purpose? They've certainly got an end goal, and I'll tell you what I believe from thousands of hours of research and looking at the documents. Okay. They are looking for a new, new society with a new form of government, the post-democratic era. Now, that's a very interesting expression. And in that post-democratic era, the government and the control will be formed by common purpose chosen leaders. So you are not going to be voting for your local councillor. The per person who's going to be running you is going to be an elitist common purpose leader. Well, well that's and, unsorted then, right? isn't it? <laughs> what do we do about it? This is the very good bit. Because the easy thing is that we expose what's happening. And this is where it's quite interesting. We have a charity which says that it's a wonderful charity. But when we ask a council or the police or a hospital, how much money have you spent on it, they don't want to tell us. Now that doesn't make sense because surely if Common Purpose was providing such brilliant training, you'd boast about it. I am pleased to tell you that Devon and Cornwall Police have spent £57,000. But when we went and tried to get that information, they actually said they got no figures on how much they'd spent. That's remarkable, isn't it? Uh, this is provable. It's truly remarkable, yes, yeah? yes. When we said, well, we know you've trained people, so do you want to re rephrase that and have a look? They suddenly say, oh, we've spent £57,000. Now, the person who was doing the freedom of information research inside the police actually said to me, I don't know what's going on, but they won't give me the information, and they keep quoting the Chatham House rule. Now, I knew what was happening because basically the common purpose trained graduates were actually refusing to give information about common purpose. And that is because it is a secretive organisation. Well, I've just got a text here from uh, one of my former guests here on, yeah. on The Edge, John Harris, the free man. Uh, the free and man. he says, I know you know him, Brian. He says, yeah. hi, Brian. Demos <laughs> is a corporation just founded on Dun & Bradstreet. Cheers, John Harris. Well, thank you very much, John. And uh, Paul yeah. in Stoke has asked, this is a really yeah. good text tonight. Yeah. Are they using NLP training? I, I think this is, this is almost certain. We know that they're using um, behavioural techniques because they admit that. There's a website that was recently set up which I think is called common, www.commonpurpose.net and on that website they are refuting claims from extreme... Oh, I am an extremist, by the way. Anybody who... Not according to you, though. Pardon? Not according to Call you. It, no, Common Purpose calls me effectively an extremist. I am, I am BMP, I am part of an extremist movement. This is in documents. Yes, and, right? yet, and yet you were considered safe hands to run a, what was it, a frigate for and, 20 years? Or well, it was a fishery protection vessel when I was a captain, but I was allowed to run around with missiles and torpedoes and things, but Common Purpose says I'm extreme. Okay. And anybody who dares to ask questions about what they're doing is extreme. Why is that? Why do you think they do that? Um, well, it's a classic uh, case of disinformation, isn't it? Well, I believe they're covering up something. Can, I'll just come back to one point, because somebody said, what do we do about it? Well, and this is yes. a key thing. Exposure. It's very easy. Write letters, freedom of information requests to your local council, police force, hospital, and ask how much they've spent on common purpose, and ask for a copy of the invoices, which you are lawfully and legally entitled to do. Okay. Are they, uh, do they have to tell you who's taken the course? Well, in fact, they won't. You will find that when you get documents back, all the names are blanked out as the details of the meetings. Again, if you go on my website, CP Exposed, you can see the real documents and you can see large areas of text redacted, blacked out. Okay. I've got a question here from Ryan in Luton. Have you spoken to any whistleblowers, as I'm sure people join with good intentions, then realise something is amiss and wish to speak yeah. out? Uh, well, the answer is yes, and I, th I think this is a very good point. Um, we've had a lot of people contact us as a result of the website and indeed articles that we've, we've put in the UK column. UK I'll column. hold that up, the UK column. Yeah, lots of copies of that everywhere. Okay. And um, they tell stories. They'll tell stories about strange things happening in their organisation. Some people say they've done the course, and some are quite rude. They think it's rubbish. 
But other people have told us about seeing changes in people close to them. So one man talked about seeing his wife change, her personality changed, after she'd done common purpose training. And this is not surprising because according to common purpose themselves, um, they're using Kolb and techniques which link into Jung. You're talking about changing people's views. Brian, we're going for another break now. Once again, if you'd like to text in your questions or comments, do so now. See you very soon. Thank you.